this video a vitamin that keeps patients out of dialysis for 20 years and also a way to cheat your diet and still be all right and the truth about youtube censorship Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today I will answer all your questions because as always I received lots of interesting questions from you guys and I can't wait to answer them. So let's not waste another second and start with the answers. Starting with a question from one Natalie Ann, she asks, Question, my mom's been rocking a stable kidney function at GFR 25 for like 20 years now. I think it's thanks to her hardcore vegan diet and the family doctor as well. She also takes vitamin D every day. Do you think I should give her sodium bicarbonate as well? No, absolutely don't do anything her doctor doesn't approve of. I mean, a GFR stable in stage 4 for 20 years, that's a miracle. Her doctor must be really good. I'm guessing her doctor is a nephrologist. Please let me know. I'm really curious. Keep doing what her doctor says. Don't change anything. And it's really interesting that you mention a vegan diet and vitamin D. But please don't experiment with sodium bicarbonate here. Just double check that her serum bicarbonate is in range and I bet it is. Otherwise, keeping a stable kidney function for 20 years is not gonna be possible. Okay, another question about vitamin D. This one is from Sarah KK2AG. What is the dosage of vitamin D and vitamin K? Please say the dosage and when to take. Thank you for the question, Sarah. So first of all, the dosage for vitamin K is super easy, zero milligrams a day. That's right, zero, zilk, nada. If you need help remembering this number, just think of it as the exact same amount of care your health insurance provider gives about your well-being, zero. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about vitamin K2 because that's what you probably meant. The dosage here is 100 micrograms taken in the morning with some fats. Why fats, you ask? Because fat-soluble vitamins, you know, K2, D, E, love fats the way health insurers love premiums. They are inseparable, really. So, vitamin K and K2 are easy. Now, for vitamin D, things are more complicated because while I could tell you that a good maintenance dose is 1000 I of vitamin D3, again, in the morning with fats, that would only work for people with high enough vitamin D levels to begin with. If your levels are too low, and this is very common in CKD patients, you will need more vitamin D than that. But how much, you ask? Well, for someone with a mild deficiency, 50,000 IU weekly or 6,000 IU daily for 8 to 12 weeks of vitamin D3 may be recommended. But please never take a dose like this without consulting your doctor and monitoring your serum levels. If you have CKD, you will need to monitor your serum vitamin D at least once a year and your doctor should prescribe the correct vitamin D3 for you. Okay, up next, a question about avoiding excess acid in blood. AI Sahib3768 asks, Is there anything besides sodium bicarbonate to raise pH? Is water sold at 9.5 pH genuine? And how much to use? So what else can you do besides taking sodium bicarbonate to improve your acid alkaline balance and avoid metabolic acidosis? Well, first of all, there is the low-protein plant-based diet. Keep in mind that everything you eat can be acid-forming or alkaline-forming. Meat, fish, and dairy are some of the most acid-forming foods, and that's bad. On the other hand, vegetables, green, leafy vegetables in particular, are the most alkaline-forming foods. And yes, the renal diet really helps, but in some cases, it's still not enough, and there is the need for sodium bicarbonate. Now, what about water sold as 9.5 pH smart water and all that stuff? Well, let's just say that the only thing smart about smart water is the marketing team that's pocketing your money. Seriously, 9.5 pH water doesn't work. Save your money. 
Better yet, spend it on lab tests to monitor your CO2 levels or serum bicarbonate levels because those actually matter. Up next, another question about sodium bicarbonate. This one from Yami Olubodun854. Can someone with heart disease still take sodium bicarbonate supplements? Someone I know tried it and his heart started palpitating. We were scared he would have a heart attack. Oh, that's scary. Well, fortunately, it's not common at all to get heart palpitations from sodium bicarbonate. However, sodium bicarbonate is not a supplement to take without consulting a doctor. Think of sodium bicarbonate like a toddler with a Sharpie. It needs supervision. First of all, because not everyone needs it. Second, because your dose needs to be calculated by your doctor and your serum bicarbonate needs to be monitored. By the way, if you want to learn how to calculate this dose, I recently made a video about this. It's up here and also down in description. Now, if you want to know why someone will get palpitations from sodium bicarbonate, my best guess will be a mega dose, a dose that wasn't appropriate. You see, a common dose of sodium bicarbonate is a single 650 milligrams tablet taken three times a day. That's about one eighth of a level teaspoon. Tiny, right? And of course, in order to get heart palpitations from sodium bicarbonate, you need to really take a lot of it and to be sensitive to sodium and probably to have a pre-existing electrolyte imbalance and heart disease. Actually, while there are certain risks with sodium bicarbonate, it's not that dangerous. I mean, it's not epinephrine. I see it more as the proverbial straw that broke the camel back in this situation. Okay, up next, a very interesting question about the renal diet from Rafael P. Nogueira. Are there times that I can get out from the healthy diet? And if the answer is yes, which is the frequency once in a year, once in a month or in six Ah, the eternal question. Can I cheat on my diet? Well, Raphael, let me break it down for you. Each Christmas, CKD patients worldwide collectively consume enough salt to the eyes all of Scandinavia twice. That's 18,000 billion grams of sodium. And don't get me started on the sugar because every December, the planet inhales so much desert, it could glaze the entire surface of the moon with frosting. So can you get out of your healthy diet? Sure, if you want to personally contribute to this impressive statistics. But here's the catch. Every indulgence brings you one step closer to making headlines of your own. Something like local CKD patient tries to out eat Santa ends up with record breaking stomach ache. Is it worth it? Okay, okay. Jokes aside, asking a doctor how many cheat meals you can have is like asking your car mechanic how far you can drive your car without any oil in it. What do I have to tell you until you start seeing smoke and flames? And of course, I get it. Being strict with the diet during the holidays is a lot easier said than done. I don't recommend it, but I won't judge you if you eat a little dessert. Just don't aim for the moon, all right? Okay, up next, another question about sodium. This one is from Monica Pulu, 2352. If sodium levels in the blood sometimes tend to drop, is it even dangerous? So what is the correct thing to do? Decreasing the consumption of salt in the kitchen is good for keeping blood pressure values low, but the sodium value then drops. What is best to do? Okay, thank you, Monica. This is a very interesting question. So let's say you read your lab reports and your sodium is too low. Is adding more salt to your diet going to help? First of all, no, you shouldn't read your fridge and demolish a pile of french fries drenched in soy sauce. That's never a solution. That's only going to make things worse. Let me explain. When someone with advanced stage CKD has too low sodium or chloride in their lab reports, well, this is a red flag for 
fluid overload. In fact, having too low sodium does not mean you are not eating enough salt, but that your kidneys are removing less fluids than they should. What we are looking at in this case is excess water diluting sodium concentration in the blood. And do you know what happens when there is too much fluid in the body? Anyone knows that? That's right, you start to look like that Michelin man just with more hypertension. Yeah, that's why adding even more sodium is a bad idea here. More sodium will mean even more fluids going around in the body causing blood pressure to raise even more. So this is why it's so important to monitor these levels in your lab reports, sodium and chloride. If they are too low, your doctor might want to look into your daily fluid intake or into a diuretic to restore balance. Okay, up next, a question from Aki... Aki... Okay, up next, a question from Aquila Survey 7568. Catherine, are you giving consultations in India? Okay, that's an easy question. Yes, yes, I do. I offer remote one-on-one -on -one consultations and I can absolutely see patients from India. Actually, I can see patients from anywhere in the world. If you are interested, you can send me an email to katherine at newhopeforkinipatients.com and there is also a link you can follow down in the description. And guys, if you are interested in following an approach with a proven track record, this is a great time to start. Up next, a question about teas. Oh, I love these. This is from Bill Reyes, 7645. She asks, how about combination of hibiscus and chamomile? This was in my video about some of the best teas for kidney health. And yes, absolutely, you can combine hibiscus and chamomile. They're both great and they can be used together because they protect the kidneys in two different ways. In fact, while they're both sources of antioxidants, hibiscus tea, acts as a mild diuretic promoting increased urine production great to protect from high blood pressure but the way chamomile tea protects the kidneys is thanks to its calming properties which can help reduce stress and promote overall well-being never underestimate this benefit stress management is very important for protecting the kidneys so yeah, I think camel tea and hibiscus tea can be a great combination. Okay guys, let's go from teas, my favorite topic ever, to my least favorite topic ever. Censorship. Here's a question a user called Lilo Lai asking my video about Luigi Mangione and the healthcare scandal. Who's censoring the words assassin, pass away and more? Catherine or YouTube, don't let the glass generation bully you away from the right terminology. Emotional weaklings who can't handle language should get professional help. Okay, thank you, Lilo Lai, for the question. So first of all, I'm pretty sure no one in my audience qualifies uh, as an emotional weakling. I mean, if you can handle a disease as terrifying as CKD and you're still here laughing at my jokes about fluid retention, well, you're probably tougher than protein bar that's been sitting in the back of a dialysis center vending machine for five years. Now, the reason I myself censor certain words isn't because of delicate sensibilities, it's because of bots. That's right, YouTube uses bots to flag and hide content they don't like. Yeah, that happened to me in the past. It happened a lot. So, yeah, I'm self-censoring some words with the hope of preventing the whole video from being censored because of course if my content goes against their own political agenda i don't want to give them a reason to hide it from youtube and these words you mentioned are the typical excuse they use to hide videos from youtube because if you think youtube is happy about people talking freely about luigi well think again their censorship is so blatant, it even made the news. I mean, someone is even removing trace in the news about this censorship. Yeah, guys, I was able to spot this live. Look at this magic trick. Now you see it. Now you don't. It's gone without a trace while I was trying to access it. No more Luigi. Mamma mia. And that's why we can't complain about censorship. I mean, literally. Yeah, guys, 
Who here is old enough to remember when 1984 was just a book? Okay guys, just one more question about this topic and only because today I feel adventurous. So here's a question from Nayana Reyes, 1469. She asks, what do you think of Luigi? Guilty or not guilty? For me, he is guilty for what he did, but it is a message. Look, Nayana, I have no idea if Luigi is guilty, but I'll say this. If they want a jury to convict him, they'll need to find 12 people in the U.S. who have never been sued by an insurance company. And good luck with that. I mean, many people already think he is a saint. I can totally picture, you know, the prosecutor telling Luigi at the start of the trial, we've found a jury of your peers and then 12 CEOs from various insurance companies walk in. <laughs> okay, okay, that joke is not mine. It's from a comment I saw under a video from Mike Raffi, a lawyer on YouTube. And it's also a video about... The jury nullification. Yes, jury nullification. Isn't that what a lot of people are hoping for? For those that are not familiar with this, jury nullification is when... Jury nullification essentially means that the jury decides the law was violated, but they don't care. It is not the taboo thing that you might think it is. So yeah, that's why I'm saying they still need to convict him. By the way, I've linked the video from this lawyer in the description if you are interested or if you want to know why I keep talking about Luigi Mangione, up here you can find my video about the topic of healthcare insurance denying claims to CKD patients. It's up here and also down in the description. And guys, if you have other questions for me, ask them down in the comment section and I will try to answer as many as possible. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. God bless.